What up, folks? It's Dr. Remy LeBeau, and I'm coming at you once again from the x Lair to once again uh, provide some thoughts on the latest episode of Twin Peaks. This is Twin Peaks, The Revival, Season 3, Episode 8. And if you've watched the episode, like, I'm assuming that your mind has been blown, um, just like my mind has just been blown, because... What I just saw was a cinematic work of art, and it was probably the most interesting episode of any show I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, it is, it is just a, a gem of a of a of a filmic product that only today's current like form of the industry could produce in a world where now like we're seeing cinematic content on television i mean it, it, actually it's a marriage of a couple of things it's that and also having a true master of the craft david lynch like being given like basically a blank check to do whatever the hell he wanted and he did this episode was intense it's an intense experience all right, so I'm gonna get into it. If you haven't watched, if you haven't watched the episode, I don't recommend you listen to this. I think you should be surprised by this episode. Uh, but if you have watched the episode, this is what I think about it. So, um, the episode, obviously for me, is a telling of Bob's origin in a very cinematic and poetic way. Uh, so. De the death, uh, well, I mean, the presumed death of the Cooper doppelganger possessed by uh, Bob obviously was the catalyst for the entire episode. Um, <laughs> that was so... I, I, we saw, obviously, we saw Cooper die. Not Cooper die, but, like, the doppelganger be taken down with a few bullets, and then we see these, this, first of all, like what we actually saw, like the actual sequence and the way it was represented, where you had um, all these guys in that black makeup, these, sh let's call them shadow men. I'm gonna call them shadow men. So these like shadow men, like that look like vagabonds and, and, um, Anyway, like they surrounded the body and like started spreading his blood and then started taking out what looked to be like an egg that had Bob in it, which I guess is maybe the way that Bob, like the essence of Bob is being represented in the show now. Because maybe they, maybe the, I don't even know if the actor's alive to be honest. Um, so this might be like David Lynch just kind of doing what he can with what he has and and it working, you know, I like it, I like it, like, you kind of have Bob in there, but it's not, and it is, it is fucking Bob, but it's just, he's being represented abstractly, rather than, you know, having the actual actor, um, doing things. Anyway, um, <laughs> oh my god. I, my, my mind is still blown, I'm still trying to process it, because, <clears throat> We have okay, so I, I mean, before even the cra the really crazy shit began, we had the death of Cooper, or not the, the presumed death of the doppelganger, and then cut to a performance by Nine Inch Nails inside that bar that he's been the the bar from Twin Peaks. It was such a fucking that whole sequence before anything else. Was a very, it was very much a delight. Anyway, I, I actually I forgot to kind of flesh out my thoughts on. I'm still I'm still a little screwed up by the episode, which I love. Uh, but like just like that whole sequence of like the guys like kind of spreading the blood over Cooper and and kind of taking out the Bob egg, like how they were um, somewhat transparent and like the way they were being represented. It's just it was so creepy, but it's just. That David Lynch is so good at taking like really commonplace shit and making it feel creepy as fuck, and he he's just a master of it. And like, and he did it there. Um, then you had that sequence with the Nine Inch Nails performance, which I fucking thought was great. 
then cut back to Cooper and he wakes up. Awesome. Love it. Um, there obviously is something weird going on. Like, Bob did some fucking crazy shit when he was in Cooper's body for the last, like, 25 years. And um, that's how he got out of prison. And Anyway... There's something, there's some weird shit going on, obviously, in the actual world. But once Cooper wakes up, we cut to New Mexico, 1945, a nuclear bomb explosion. Right? My God, that shot! It was very much like 2001 Kubrick. But this is David Lynch, and he's done some weird shit. Like if you watch Dune, there's a, actually there were some Dune-ish qualities to this episode, um, as far as like kind of like that poetic eerie uh you know kind of effect like it definitely had that um anyway that ex that nuclear explosion was probably the most interesting portrayal of a nuclear explosion that i've ever fucking seen um and then we went into the explosion and then that was like a fucking trippy fucking five minutes of fucking craziness then we saw like this like white demon and it was like it was like, I don't know, out of it were coming maybe more demons, and in there was that Bob egg. So this, I think, like, I, the, what's being implied is that the nuclear, the nuclear explosion ripped into the fabric of reality, and it, and it let something into it, like this demon that allowed for this essence to come into our world, and... And anyway, so then we go to that, we go, okay, so we go, it, uh, eventually we get to, like, sh shots of, like, an ocean, and then that takes us to, like, like, a big sort of mountain, mountainous rock um, that has a peak, and then at that peak there's some sort of fortress, and in the fortress we see that tall man who, who, who was one of the, the, the uh, characters that would pop up for Cooper in the last... In season two of of Twin Peaks, in that would pop up in that red room in the Black Lodge. Obviously, he's involved, obviously, in that whole thing. So this implied that he was some sort of overseer, or maybe like a watcher, or maybe he has some control over all of reality. And like this fissure in reality, seeing this demon enter the world, maybe Bob. Um, that prompted this overseer, this tall man, in his very cool, like, I, I, that whole sequence, I, every single moment of this was, like, incredible. It's, like, incredible work of fucking art. Incredi- motherfucking old. Just incredible. I think I missed a beat there. Anyway. It pro- like, he- this fissure and the, and the fact that he sees this demon Bob being released into the world prompts him to send Laura Palmer's essence into the world. Um, that's sort of what was implied as though Laura Palmer was kind of a something that needed to coexist with Bob, maybe to keep Bob in check, maybe. Um, anyway, so there's there was that whole thing, and then and then the oh god that sequence. So once we went, so th right before this last sequence that I just talked about with, with um, the old, the tall man and sending Laurel Palmer's essence to Earth or whatever, like we had that sequence, uh, like those shots of that gas station and like, in like the fifties and then like or in forty five, nineteen forty five, and like the smog come in and then like all those kind of like jump cutty, uh, that whole jump cut sequence where you see these like these uh these shadow men like kind of walking around the gas station coming in and out implying that maybe the explosion had also kind of let them out or maybe drawn them in maybe they were drawn in by the explosion the fact that they realized that it, there was a um a fissure in reality and like bob is somehow some like a someone they were waiting for maybe um and and then we so then we went forward like what 10 years 1956 or something and then we saw that creature that looked kind of like a cross between a human 
a fly and a roach um, come out of an egg and then kind of crawl off and then it's all it's all it's all everything shot in black and white which I really really appreciated um, and the and these black and these shadow men then take over a radio station and like and put out everybody to sleep so that they can allow this creature that hatched to go into the body of this girl and then the episode ends right i the, what i mean what i would in what i would think is that this girl is bob's mother like she gives birth to bob with this other kid that she was talking to maybe they are the parents of bob and they, and then, you know, like, you know, through her reproductive system, like, she created Bob out of this creature. And I don't know. I'm just, I'm very, I'm speculating quite a bit. But so that's what I think was happening in the episode. The way that it was represented was exquisite. It was exquisite filmmaking. It was David Lynch at his best. I can see now why Showtime was, like, nervous about this. But. You shouldn't be nervous, Showtime. Like, this is legendary. This is going to make a mark, I think. And it might actually change the, th the nature of what is even being represented on television programs. Going beyond just like, let's represent like scale and scope in the cinematic, uh, in a cinematically equivalent way on television. But actually, let's allow artists, true artists of the filmic form to play within this within this medium in any way that they want and kind of just like let let let's see what happens you know let's see what comes out of that um maybe the if this is successful which i hope it will be because it should be because it's fucking incredible um then maybe they'll allow more kind of of this type of uh, artistic um product to be produced because it would be really fucking dope. Anyway, this was a fucking incredible episode. Um, I, I think this episode and everything that's led up to it and the promise of more is, has promulgated this series to the top of my best series on television list. Prior to this, it was Game of Thrones, then um, Wa Walking Dead, and then I think Flash was third for me. But now I have Twin Peaks at the very top. Twin Peaks actually is above Game of Thrones for me um, because of what, like, what's being produced is cinematic art. Game of Thrones is the perfect use of the cinematic form to tell the most compelling fucking story. It's completely different. But as far as like a filmic product goes, like Twin Peaks is completely a, a work of art versus Game of Thrones is just, is a, is a narrative product that is very artistic and beautiful and unique and wonderful but Twin Peaks itself is is an actual work of art using the filmic form and that is really exciting anyway thanks for checking out my uh, review thanks for checking out my channel if you haven't already done so you can subscribe right there and as always I'd like to remind you that if you haven't already put an X in that box because ain't nobody checking me folks take care bye bye